My guest today is Claire Thomas, a self-taught chef, food photographer, writer, and cookbook author, among many things you are, um, who uses your, her blog, The Kitchen Kitchen, as an experimental playground. Um, so I would love to, honestly, I would love to hear the story behind Kitchy Kitchen and when you decided to start it. Yeah, well, I started the Kitchy Kitchen about 10 years ago, so I've been doing this for quite a while, and I just was really inspired by the food I grew up with. I grew up in Southern California, so I was surrounded by really beautiful produce, amazing history and culture, and so the Kitchy Kitchen is really an expression of that. It's just delicious, simple food that is easy to make but looks beautiful as well, but most importantly, it's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so Claire it, want, is joining us today um, with her cat Mochi, yeah. and they're in Los Angeles to talk about you know easy ways, as you mentioned, to keep mealtime fresh and exciting. I know that I kind of get in that rut to just what am I going to cook tonight? I do the same thing always. So how how can we kind of easily change up our game at home and turn our eat our everyday mealtime into something a little bit more exciting. Yeah, I actually had kind of a funny moment where I was inspired by Mochi's meal. <laughs> so I kind of, I'm a new mom, so I'm definitely hitting those ruts, you know, those moments of, oh my gosh, I've been making the same thing every day all week. Mm -hmm. And I looked over at Mochi yeah. and I realized, oh my gosh, my cat's been having the same thing all day every week as well. And I found this new product that I love. It's the Purely Fancy Feast Filets and Mochi loves them. So the the idea is you take this filet, you can flake it off, it's a complement to the food so it goes on top of her food or she can have it whole and she loves it. And I thought that's such a good idea, I should be doing that in my own life where I take recipes that are classics that I know, you know, it's something I'm confident in, I don't have to learn a new recipe and hope it turns out or anything like that. And then I just add new ingredients that are seasonal that really just kind of update it, freshen up the flavor and make it interesting. That's awesome. I think everybody can kind of um, relate to that. So I like the idea of adding new and seasonal ingredients. So yeah. I, I, um, and especially with the changing of the seasons, and I think it's important to just kind of cook with what is in season. So that's really helpful. Definitely. I mean, and the farmer's market is such an incredible resource and such a good place for inspiration. I know for me, that's where I go whenever I need to kind of think of something new and I just kind of don't know what I'm going to be doing. I go to the farmer's market and I just taste and I try to find new produce that I haven't had before. Or honestly, I ask the farmers because they know their produce better than anyone and they will tell you really interesting ideas for how to prepare their produce. That's Awesome. I actually lived in Seattle for a couple of years, and that's where I kind of got into the uh, farmer's market scene. We didn't have, I live in Houston now, so mm -hmm. we, it, it's getting there, but um, that's kind of where I started to uh, love the farmer's markets and just really talking to them, like you said. Definitely. Well, and now it's springtime, so farmer's markets are starting to open up all across the country with the warmer weather. So I definitely recommend people trying to find their local one and check it out because it's a really great way not only to connect with your community, but also to connect with the foodways around you. Yes, perfect. Um, so given your professional, your professionalism and self-proclaimed unbiased or unpassed um, enthusiasm for food, um, you spend a lot of time planning and prepping meals. So how do you maintain your creativity? Yeah, well, it's kind of like I was saying about the farmer's market. For me, it's really about finding inspiration from the world around me. So my joke is that, you know, you could, to be a good home cook, you actually have to be a great eater, you know? So you have to get out there and really eat food, try new things, try new flavors. And for me, like I mentioned with my cat Mochi, I just, I got inspiration from looking at her and seeing what she, her experience was and kind of thinking about how can I elevate my entire family's experience, including my, you know, furry friends like Mochi and my dog Buster. <laughs> um, so, like you, I also have a seven seven month old. Oh my gosh! And congrats! So I, yeah, thank you. So, I would like to know how has life kind of changed for you and your pets since Adam since adding James to your family? Oh my goodness! Well, I'm sure you know, um, but James is <laughs> he is crawling, <laughs> so he is mobile. Uh -huh. Okay. Which is a new a new thing. Um, and what's fun too is he's very interested in the pets. So with Mochi particularly, we're learning gentle touch because he's learning how to pet her, 
which is really sweet. Okay. Um, and it's been cute to watch. She's very patient with him and very obliging. And for us, um, the biggest shift I think has been around mealtime because now I'm not mm -hmm. just feeding myself or my husband, but it's a baby. And then Buster the dog is hanging out, hoping for scraps from James's high chair. Yeah. And then Mochi's on the table trying to steal bites from my plate. So we really do eat as a family. And that's why I, I'm very focused, not just on my own family's health and nutrition, but also my pets as well. Yeah, and I think that's I think it's good to incorporate your children into mealtime because I think they're more they're more willing to eat what they see you eating and I yeah. kind of learned that from from my 2-year-old cuz he was very bad about eating solid foods at first, but mm -hmm. now that he sees his brother eating solids and that we're eating vegetables, he's more inclined to do that as well. So I think that's great what you said to just kind of introduce them and set them down with you, even if they don't eat as much as you, at least they see you eating. <laughs> oh, exactly. And one big thing I've been doing in the way I prepare my own meals is I've been really thoughtful about making things that I can eat, but James can eat too. James had like okay. a lot of teeth come in early, so he's definitely chewing oh. a lot. Yeah. Um, okay. So I've been able to, for instance, if I'm making myself some sweet potatoes, I'll just make sure that I salt them at the table for myself rather than before. Mm -hmm. And I'll just cut off little pieces of soft sweet potato and James grabs them and tries to nibble them. But when he sees me, me take it from my plate and put it on his, he's so quick to try it. And it helps encourage that kind of experimentation and sort of curiosity for James. It definitely does good. I'm so glad that you said that. Uh, my son is actually very late in getting teeth. He doesn't have teeth, any teeth yet. So <laughs> it's so funny how every baby's different. You know, every journey with every baby is so different. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, I, and I'm still feeding him like fish and other things that I didn't think that he could eat that yeah. he, because he doesn't have teeth, but he's just he's just chewing along. <laughs> yeah, they find a way. I mean, same thing. I gave James, um, he loves chicken and he loves fish, even though he doesn't have molars yet, but he still, yeah, he finds a way to, he just gobbles it up. He loves it. Yes, definitely. Um, so thank you so much for your time, Claire. It's been really good to know you. Um, where can our viewers and our readers find out more about you and Fancy Feet? Absolutely. Well, to find out more about The Kitschy Kitchen, you can go to thekitschykitchen.com. And to find out more about Mochi's new favorite snack, check out fancyfeast.com slash filet your way. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Claire. It's been really great talking to you. Thank you so much. Have a good day. You too.